I'm seeing something pretty interesting in the world of physical media right now. Now, I'm going to take a little step away from the video game landscape and talk about other forms of physical media uh, right now. There has been a resurgence for a while in some forms of physical media. Now, as games are moving away from physical media, very obviously we are seeing services like Game Pass on Xbox's platforms, for example, uh, rise in popularity uh, to mirror something like Netflix for movies and TV, where, you know, the game, <clears throat> the game developers, the game publishers, they want full control over these properties. They don't want you to have a physical copy of a game that you can move from system to system. They want to resell you the games over and over on different systems for different users. They don't want you to share these games with your friends. They don't want you to be able to sell the game and get some of your money back and someone else get a deal. They want full control. And that's kind of where media has been going across all forms of media for years. Of course, we saw, you know, back in the late 90s and early 2000s, we saw the rise of piracy with music downloading, for example, and sites like Napster and Kazaa and LimeWire uh, sucking away all the sales from physical CDs for musicians. And there was eventually, we saw with the creation of the iPad, or sorry, with the iPod, the creation of the iPod, in the mid-2000s, we saw the rise of digital uh, distribution for music, and that gave artists a way to actually make money off digital, non-physical copies of their music. And from there, now it's pretty unusual for someone to even bother pirating music because we have stuff like Amazon Music, Apple Music, Spotify, things like that, where we can pay this small monthly fee and get all the music in the world on any device we want at the touch of a finger, right? But along alongside that, there was a resurgence for people to go back and find that that experience, that nostalgic experience and the, the quality and the sound of vinyl records. And today, vinyl records sell more copies, more physical copies of vinyl records are sold than CDs at this point for a lot of different artists. And it's, you know, it's, it's really kind of crazy when you think about it because you think of vinyl records as being extremely outdated technology, and it is, but there's a certain quality uh, to the sound that you get, that analog sound that you get from a vinyl record uh, that's in good condition and playing on a good record player with a good needle and good speakers and a good amplifier. There's something that you can't quite replace with that. And people have realized that a lot of digital music, even if you're dealing with something like spatial audio on Amazon or, uh, sorry, on Apple Music, or if you've got you know, flack files that you've downloaded that are supposed to be super high quality, there's still something missing there. And people more and more have moved towards vinyl records as a way to kind of reconnect with the music that they love. And music might have been the first one to do it for the last several years, for the last decade since Netflix has really risen to prominence. And of course now Netflix is struggling because there are so many competitors in the marketplace of streaming media, streaming mu music and TV and stuff like that. So Netflix has been struggling for a while. And as all these other services pop up, your, your Disney Pluses and your HBO Maxes and Amazon and Hulu, and all these different competitors pop up and they're all clawing for a piece of the pie. You know, what used to be a really great service in Netflix with just about everything that you would want to play or watch, it's just, it's not all there anymore. Uh, certain countries get different versions of Netflix because of licensing rights. So here in Canada, I haven't lost as much as a lot of people in the States have. Uh, but in the States, for example, you can no longer watch the Star Trek shows on Netflix. And uh, while I can here in Canada, and you could here, you could in the States with a VPN watch the Canadian version of Netflix, a lot of people are not that tech savvy or they just can't be bothered. 
And uh, so what has been happening recently, and this, you know, for me as well, I have a ton of downloaded files, tons, like terabytes of downloaded media. Uh, and I used to run Kodi or Plex Media Server, various things like that uh, on computers and TVs and things like that to serve my media out to my devices and watch my downloaded content. Uh, but increasingly, those services are, are more and more complicated. They're urging you to pay for the premium experience. They're locking uh, things behind paywalls. They're adding all kinds of internet content and things like that to these services. And it's becoming less and less convenient. And more and more, I find myself in a value village or in a goodwill, picking up a season of TV, for five or six or seven dollars or even two or three dollars often uh, and just popping DVDs into my DVD player and watching them on my tube TV the way I used to do in 2001 or two and finding that the experience is just so much better. You know, yes, I've got a 4K TV here, but you know what? Watching pirated copies of Frasier in 480p on a 4K TV it's not really that great anyway. It looks better on my tube TV. It feels better on a DVD player with the special features, the commentary, the bloopers, all of this kind of stuff that comes with these DVDs that we have lost in the stream, streaming you know, landscape. We've lost all that extra stuff, all the interviews, the commentaries, and all that kind of stuff is you know, it's not there anymore. That's something that is unique to the DVD era. And a lot of you who follow the channel know that I, I have been collecting physical media for a long time, but I was the weird guy. Like, uh, you know, my friends, my family, people will, would know, oh, Aaron will take that old junk off your hands and they would give me boxes full of VHS. I've got hundreds of VHS here and DVDs and things like that. I'm seeing more and more and more people as I'm a member of multiple fan groups on Facebook for shows, some of my favorite shows like The X-Files and Smallville and Star Trek Voyager, Star Trek Deep Space Nine. So many of these dedicated fan groups, more and more and more people are saying, the hell with these streaming services. We saw just this week, Doctor Who moved to Disney Plus. The entire franchise, future and past, has moved to Disney Plus now. And a lot of people are not going to have access to Doctor Who on the traditional, uh, you know, over the air broadcast places that they used to have access to it. Um, you know, it's going to be exclusively on Disney Plus in a lot of regions. And that makes people angry because maybe they don't want Disney Plus for anything else. And now they have to pay that 10 or $15 a month for that one show. So then it really becomes a matter of, do I dig out my DVD player and pick up a few seasons of TV shows here for five or 10 or even $20 a season uh, used or whatever? Because honestly, if I can have this, if I can have Friends season one to 10 on my shelf, I can put the disc in the machine, play whatever episode I want, and there's just, there's just no problem. So anyways, I'm kind of rambling here, but my point with the video was there is a resurgence. People are starting to turn back to physical media after a decade of you know, throwing their DVDs and their VHS and the garbage, donating them to Goodwill. Now they're starting to think about buying them back. And I'm not alone anymore. I'm not the weird guy on the block that wants all of your old junk. I'm not just that weird hoarder anymore that wants all of your old junk. Now, now people are looking to me and people are asking me questions about where do I get this and where do I get that and what is the best solution? Hey, Aaron, you know, my favorite show is not on Netflix anymore. Where do I find it? And I've got to say, hey, I've got it on DVD and you can too. I don't know, what do you guys think uh, about physical media in general? Uh, have you moved on from physical media entirely? I know right now the way things are going in gaming, we're probably looking at several years of 
moving towards digital media because gaming was kind of the last marketplace to go digital and we're probably going to be going digital for a while but there are a ton of gaming fans that insist on physical media and part of what made me think about this topic today was uh, we just found out yesterday or the day before that Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, the biggest game of the year probably, uh, launched with 70-something megabytes on the disc. You've got a Blu-ray disc capable of holding like 100 gigabytes or uh, I can't remember how big a, a Blu-ray disc is, but anyway, they've only got like 70 megabytes of the game on the disc and when you put the disc in you have to download that entire 100 gigabytes to your console. The game is not on the disc. At like, what point is there to even having the disc at this point? Uh, it's virtually just a, a CD key, literally. It's just a key to unlock your download. Um, a lot of people are upset about that because if you don't have great internet, like I don't have great internet, it will take me a couple of days, literally like 48 hours to download 100 gigabytes. So, you know, I can't play the game by simply putting the disc in. And a lot of people are upset about that. And a lot of people tend to collect things like Switch games because, because for the most part, all of the game is on the cartridge. And I don't know where we're gonna go in the future. Probably with the next generation, we're going to lose disk drives entirely. Uh, but then there's gonna be a resurgence with that, just like there is with music and movies and TV shows. There's going to be a resurgence for the physical media. You're going to see people turning more and more to the retro games market. Uh, stuff that's not even necessarily retro, but just old enough to have physical media in its entirety on the disc, systems like PS2, and for the most part, PS3 and Xbox 360 uh, have most of the game, aside from any updates or patches, on the disc, and you'll be able to play those games forever. Whereas, you know, something on the PS4 or PS5 that requires a huge download to even play the game, those, those discs are gonna be coasters in the future. Unfortunately, right now, the digital age is here because there's no such thing as a modern digital game anymore on a disc. Like a modern physical game basically doesn't exist. It's, a, it's, a, it's an illusion, if you will. Anyways, guys, thanks for sticking around. Thanks for engaging in this conversation. Please leave some comments down below. Uh, will you start to buy DVDs and Blu-rays and things like that again, or are you done with that and completely committed to chasing your favorite shows all around, around the internet from all these different uh, streaming services? Are you willing to subscribe to seven or eight or 10 different streaming services just to get the content that you want available to you? Or are you starting to consider uh, having a collection of physical media again. You know, stuff like Dog the Bounty Hunter, for example, uh, it's not streaming anywhere that I know of in Canada. I did find that it was up on some streaming service that was geo-locked that I couldn't get in the States. And, uh, you know, if I want to just go, go back and relive uh, some of that early 2000s nostalgia, this is the only way to do it. Anyways, thanks so much, guys. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Stay classy.